Number one, in a science class, Claire and Lynn estimate the mass of eight different objects that actually weigh 2,000 grams each. Here are the summary statistics. Which student was better at estimating the mass of the objects? Explain your reasoning. So better at estimating them. So when we look at this, um, the mean of each of their data is 2,000, which is the exact amount each of the grams were or each of the items were. The median for Claire was 2,000 and the median for Lynn was 1950. So hers was a little bit below, um, but, but all of their central data was very close to the actual weight. But once we start looking at the variability of the data, so the mean absolute deviation for Claire was 275 versus Lynn's was 225. This means that Lynn's data, um, the deviation of the data was closer to the mean than Claire's was. So hers were spread out further or like much higher and lower numbers than 2000 were included in her data versus Claire's were closer to that 2000. And then also the interquartile range for Claire is 500 versus Lynn's is 350. So that means that Lynn's data was closer together to this median than Claire's was. So I personally would say um, that Lynn's, Lynn is better at estimating than Claire. Because even though um, they both had central data, they're, they're measures of center. So even, even though they both had center measures that were close to 2000, Lynn's data had less variability. Lynn's guesses, maybe, or estimates. had less variation or less variability. Number two, a reporter counts the number of times a politician talks about jobs in their campaign speeches. What is the mean average distribution of the data represented in this dot plot? So remember for figuring out the mean absolute deviation, we need to figure out the actual mean first. And so if we look here, this data is symmetric. So the mean is gonna be right in the middle or the part that separates the data. So in this case, that's gonna be 5.5, right in between five and six. So then we wanna figure out how far each data point is away from 5.5 and make sure that you do um, the absolute value so you don't do any negative numbers. So 5.5 minus three is 2.5. 5.5 minus four is 1.5. 5.5 minus five is 0.5 and we have three of these. And then six is 0.5 away as well. Seven is 1.5 away and eight is 2.5 away. So then we would total up all of those numbers. Okay, so all of those mean um, average or all of those mean um, distances. So add those all together. So two 2.5s is five, two 1.5s is three. This is 1.5 and 1.5, which is three. And then how many data points do we have here? 10. So we have um, eight, 11 divided by 10, which is 1.1. Number three, four amateur golfers attempt to finish 100 holes under par several times each round of 100. The number of holes they successfully complete under par is recorded. Due to the presence of extreme values, they used box plots to determine the best representation of the data. List the four bo box plots in order of variability from least to greatest. So when we look at a box plot for variability, um, you can kind of look at, I like to look at how wide the middle part is, the IQR, right? So if we were to subtract these, 
So you could actually subtract Q3 minus Q1, um, but variability means really the width of this, right? So here's the least variability because this is the smallest box, okay? That's the smallest box. So C would have the least variability. Then we go to this one, okay? A would be the next least, then B, and then D is the widest. So this one's the widest, meaning it has the most variability, and then this is the narrowest, meaning the least. Number four, select all distribution shapes for which the median could be much less than the mean and much less than. So symmetric and bell-shaped, they'd be the same, the mean and the median, so that wouldn't allow for the median to be less than the mean. Um, so bimodal would allow that. When you've got two peaks, the median could certainly be much less than the mean, depending on how it worked out. And then these skewed, when your data is skewed to the left, that means that your mean shifts lower than the median. So the mean is below the median. And when it shifts to the right, that means that the mean is above the median, meaning the median would be less than, right? And we want it when it's less. So skewed to the right would be when the median could potentially be significantly less than the mean. Here it would have to be more than the mean. Number five, what's the five number summary for this data? So remember five number summary, you need the minimum value, which is zero. We're looking for Q1. We're looking for the median. We're looking for Q3. And then the maximum value, which we can see is 11. So the median, so there's 10 values here. So the median is going to be right between value, the fifth and sixth value, which both of those are five in this case. So the median is also going to be five. Then we would look at the lower half of the data, find the middle of that. That's our Q1. Upper half of the data, find the middle of that. That's five. That would be our Q3. When we remove the zero, what's the five number summary? So I'm just gonna write down the other values so that I can write on them and show you. So we had two, two, four, four fives, a seven and an 11. So our minimum now is two. We'll look for that Q1, the median, Q3, oops and the maximum. And the maximum is 11. So when we go here, now our median is an exact value here, right? This five is the very middle value, still the same as the top one. Um, and then we would look at this bottom half of the data, these four numbers, and look for the middle here. Well, the middle is gonna be the two and the four. So now we need to average those. So we would do two plus four and then divide that by two. So six divided by two gives us three for Q1. Q3, we're gonna be looking at the average of five and seven. So five plus seven is 12 divided by two gives us six for Q3. Number six, what effect does eliminating the highest value 180 from the data set have on the mean and the median? So let's find the original mean and median. I'm gonna call this the OG mean and median. So let's look for the original mean and then the original median for this data. And so our original mean, so if we add these all together, add up all these data values, we get 785 and then there are 10 values so we'll divide by 10 and that gives us an, a mean of 78.5 then the median is going to be right here between the fifth and sixth value so we're going to need to average those so 70 plus 85 divided by 2 and that's going to give us um, 77.5 for our original median. 
Then we'll want to go in and delete the 180. So we know all of these are going to get lower, right, since we deleted a high value. So now when we take and add these up again, or we could take 785 and subtract that um, 180 that we got rid of, our new total is 605, and we now have nine values. So when we do 605 divided by nine, we get 67.2 as our new mean. So it goes from 78 to 67.2. And now the median will be this value. So we have four below it, four above it. So our new median is 70. So we go from 77.5 to 70. Number seven, the histogram rep represents the distribution of the number of seconds it took for 50 students to find the answer to a trivia question using the internet. Which interval contains the median? Okay, so we can see they're listed like lowest interval to highest. So if we have 50 students, that means that the data is gonna be split 25 and 25. So our 24th, or sorry, our 25th value and our 26th value, that's going to be where how we're going to find the median. So if we look here, we've got 22 values in this first tower, and then we've got five in this second. So that means that our median is going to end up in this second bar or this second interval from five to 10.